Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome to my strange little YouTube channel. Now, it has been over a month since I've done a case video, which is crazy to me, but I'm hopping right back into them and I'm starting off with a hits home video. If you guys don't know what that is, that is when I cover cases that directly affect some of you guys. They are requested from one of you, whether it's somebody that you knew directly, somebody that you knew through somebody else, whether it was a case that happened to your hometown, or it's just a case that you're super interested in. Today we are talking about the disappearance of Marlena Childress. This was requested by a subscriber named Haley Thomas. They said, Marlena Childress went missing in my hometown in Tennessee. It's been over 30 years and she still has never been found. There's not a whole bunch of research, but it would be awesome to see a video on her. So that is what I'm doing today. This was a difficult case to research for because I could not talk to anybody. I usually like talking to somebody who was involved in the case, whether it was a family member or somebody who worked on the case directly and knows a lot about it, maybe runs a Facebook page or a website dedicated to the case, but I wasn't able to talk to anybody, but some people just don't want to talk to YouTubers and I completely respect that, but this was just an odd case and it's a little bit different because this case has to do with a little girl who, in my opinion, let me know after you hear every bit of information that I have to present to you guys, but let me know what you think because I think this little girl, of course grown up now, may still be out there. So with that being said, let's just get into it. Marlena Childress was an absolutely adorable little four-year-old girl from Union City, Tennessee. She was born February 17th, 1983, and was known for being a very sweet and shy little girl. On April 16th, 1987, the thing that Marlena was most looking forward to was Easter on the 19th of that month. She was a little kid, so she was super excited to go Easter egg hunting in just a few days. Around 3 p.m. on the 16th, according to her mother, Pamela Lynn Bailey, Marlena was playing outside her Union City residence by herself. Pam claimed she was inside when she heard car brakes. She ran outside and Marlena was gone. Pam Bailey told police she didn't get a good look at the car. She claimed it was an older style two-door red car with supposedly a McCracken County, Kentucky license plate. Marlena's seven-year-old stepbrother and a shop owner who worked two blocks down the street both came forward saying that they saw Marlena talking to the man inside this car. Now, I'm not sure if they were just coming forward saying this because they wanted to cover for Pam or they actually saw this. I'm not sure if they saw this together. Not sure how the man who worked at a shop two blocks down saw this. I'm not sure about any of that. I could not find that information, but that is what they claimed they saw. Police really did a pretty extensive search. They looked everywhere around the town for any remains of Marlena, anything that was hers, any evidence of where she could have gone, and they found nothing. The story made national news and was featured in newspapers all across the country, and around this time, Marlena's mother, Pam, checked herself into a hospital because of exhaustion. Only nine days after she was released from the hospital, about two months after Marlena's disappearance, Pam came out with a shocking statement. She told everyone Marlena was dead. Pam said that she was trying to discipline her daughter and that it went too far and she accidentally killed her. She told authorities that she disposed of Marlena's body in the Obion River and a local man helped her. They searched the river for five days and found nothing. So far, all police have is Bailey's admission that she killed Marlena Childress. No body has been found. And the only evidence against Summers is her statement that he helped dispose of the body. This man, P.L. Summers, a longtime acquaintance, who she says helped dispose of Marlena Childress's body. Police say he is a suspect. He has been questioned but not charged. At his Martin residence, where he refused to be photographed, he denied the charges to reporters. He didn't act like he was lying. He acted surprised by this claim and he actually checked out completely because he had an alibi. Pam was charged with second degree murder and the bond was set at $100,000 and she was set to be sent to a mental institution and be under strict watch. But before she even got to the mental institution, she changed her story again. She claimed that she never killed her daughter and that she had been manipulated into a confession by an investigator for the Dyersburg Police Department named Stan Kavnis. I don't know if anyone knows 
other than Pam. I didn't hurt Marlena in any way. And uh, all I need is for people to help me look for her. People did not know what to think. The police, the public, no one had any idea what to make of this. There was this mother whose daughter disappeared and she claimed that the person who abducted her drove a red beaten up car and her son and a shop owner working two blocks away both said that they saw the little girl talking to this man in this car. And then she comes out and says that no, there was no man in a car, that she killed her daughter herself. And then she again comes back and says that she didn't kill her daughter and that she was just being manipulated by police and through months of interrogation, she came up with this false confession. Pam changed her story so many times throughout the years and people have no idea if it was because she's actually guilty or just mental health issues, but Marlena has never been found, but there has been so many sightings of her. It's insane. I don't believe it was a murder. I believe the child is missing. Uh, I'm going to continue to believe that until either we find the child or somebody finds a body. The first supposed sighting of Marlena was a woman who came forward not long after she disappeared and said that she saw the little girl in a car, a beaten up car, and they tracked down this car to Clinton, Kentucky, and they found the owner, but there was no trace of Marlena or any proof that this person had Marlena, so this went nowhere. Then over 100 miles away in Memphis, Tennessee, on April 22nd, 1987, there was a supposed sighting of Marlena in Jean's Hairstyle Salon. Two women and two children came into the salon. The one woman was said to be in her 20s, the other woman was said to be in her 60s, and the two children with them, there was a little girl who was said to look around four to five years old and a boy that looked a little bit older, maybe six or seven. As soon as the little girl sat down in the chair, this little girl started crying out loud and saying that she missed and wanted her mommy. This little girl though looked exactly like Marlena Childress and while she was in the salon one of the ladies actually called her Marlena and told her Marlena stop crying. So this little girl looks exactly like Marlena Childress, the little girl who disappeared and her first name is Marlena. At the time she was looking straight up at me hollering for her mom which it upset me because the two ladies did not want to console the child in any way. and She was very upset. The hairdresser, Gail, would have called police if she knew about the disappearance of Marlena at the time when these people came into her salon, but she didn't hear about Marlena's disappearance until a little bit of time later when she was at a gas station and when she was checking out near the checkout counter, there was a newspaper and on the newspaper front page above the fold, there was a huge picture of Marlena and she recognized the little girl immediately as the little girl who came into her salon with the two women and the little boy. Gail bought the newspaper and she took the newspaper back to her salon and she talked to her friend Janice who was a hairstylist at the salon and worked that day. The people came in and they both agreed that is the little girl who came in. Marlena's grandfather, LeWade Strickland, believed the women's claim that they saw her and at this time he was leading his own search into finding what happened to his granddaughter. He believed that a waitress in the area looked suspicious. She supposedly left town the day after Marlena's disappearance and returned a few days later. He brought both Gail and Janice to the restaurant where this waitress worked. He sat them down and said, do you recognize anyone in here? And they looked around for a few seconds and looked at everybody, looked at all the faces, and they both said at the same exact time, that's her. And they pointed out the waitress that he thought was super suspicious at the time. Both Gail and Janice agreed that this was the woman who came into their salon with the older woman and the two children. Then Marlena's grandfather brought in six photos of different little boys to the hair salon in Memphis and asked everyone there if any of the little boys stood out as the little boy they saw that day. Out of the six photos, one of the photos was of the waitress's son. She had a son who was about six or seven at the time, and every single hairdresser separately picked him out as the little boy who came into their shop with the two women and the little girl that everybody thinks could have been Marlena Childress. They decided to give the waitress a lie detector test. They asked her if she was the one who came into the salon that day, if she knew Marlena Childress, if she had any information. She answered no to all these questions and she passed with flying colors. Then after this lie detector test and she was cleared, 
Gail and Janice started receiving threatening and harassing phone calls from this waitress almost every day at their salon. They could not link this woman to the abduction of Marlena Childress because there was no evidence, they couldn't prove that she had anything to do with it, and she passed the lie detector test. So they kind of hit a dead end. But this woman obviously knew something. She was calling Gail and Janice almost every day, harassing them, telling them to leave her alone and that they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, was she just trying to scare them? Was she angry over their claim? Did she actually have something to do with Marlena's disappearance? This is unknown. We still don't know this to this day. Out of everyone in Marlena's family, it was really Marlena's grandfather that tried the hardest. He even opened up a hotline that was open every day pretty much all day long and it was open for anyone that may have any tips or information as to where Marlena may have went. Because of the supposed sightings of her, people didn't know if she was alive or dead. They didn't know if they were looking for her or her body. Luade got a tip one day in September of 1989 from a woman in Lenore City, Tennessee. A young mother named Amy Spoon, who was at a department store one day with her children, and her children went off to play with some toys in the store, and they were playing with a little girl. The mother called to both of her children, both of them were boys, and she could hear a child coming up behind her as she had her hands on her cart, so she kind of turned around and leaned down to grab the child so she could stop the child from running into her. And when she turned around and leaned down and grabbed the child, it wasn't either of her children, it was the little girl. There wasn't too much time lapse between that, you know, just a few seconds until the woman called for her. Come here. Right now. About 10 days after this incident, Amy Spoon received a missing persons flyer in the mail and both her and her eldest son looked at it and they knew the little girl. It was Marlena Childress's missing persons flyer and they recognized her as a little girl that they saw in the department store that day 10 days earlier. As time went on, there were more and more sightings of Marlena. It's insane how many sightings there were of her and this is why I strangely believe she may still be out there. In May of 1989, she was said to be seen in Anniston, Alabama with a family. This family supposedly had the last name Childress, even though they were apparently not related to Marlena or Marlena's father's side of the family in any way, shape, or form, but they had her same last name. And this family was known for harboring other people's children, and there was a report of neglect called in, so they sent over a social worker. This social worker went to the family's home and she talked to everybody in the family. It was a mother and a father and they were harboring 10 children. And one of the 10 children that the social worker talked to was a little girl who said that her name was Marlena Childress and she looked exactly like Marlena Childress. This social worker was very familiar with the disappearance of Marlena and she went back to her department that day, told everyone what happened, and they said they were going to send over police the next day. When police got there the next day, the family was gone. They were tracked down in Florida and the father of this family was arrested for sex charges related to his wife and two out of his 10 children. This little girl Marlena was not with the family though. When the family was asked what happened to this little girl Marlena Childress, they wouldn't really answer where she went, but they said that the social worker talked to a different Marlena Childress, a different little girl who looked exactly like the little girl who disappeared two years earlier and she had the same exact name, but it wasn't her. No one knows if this little girl that they were harboring was actually Marlena Childress, the one who disappeared in 1987, or if it was just somebody that looked like her, that they used her name, but this little girl disappeared also. Anyone who worked on this case, anyone who researches into this case, just has so many questions. You're left wondering so many different things. Was Marlena murdered? Was she abducted? Was there actually a man in a red car? Does Pam know something? Was Marlena possibly sold for drugs? That's a huge theory in this case. Was Marlena the little girl who was seen all these different places? We just don't know. Well, after everything kind of settled down with this case, Pam moved to Mayfield, Kentucky, and in late April of 2002, she was 37 years old at the time, she was charged with attempted murder of her 12-year-old son. She took him into a rural cemetery and stabbed him. He was able to escape and run away. He spent the night in the Jackson Purchase Medical Center and was released to live with his father. The attack happened on Monday and the next day on Tuesday, they tracked Pam down at a gas station in Nortonville, Kentucky, over 70 miles away, and she was arrested. So there's this woman who's suspected in 
killing or having something to do with the disappearance of her daughter in 1987 and then she goes on to try to kill her 12 year old son years later do with that information what you will after pam's arrest of course she looked super suspicious so they reopened marlena's case but they still to this day have never found any more clues as to what happened to marlena childress marlena's grandfather said it's rough i always said death was the worst thing that could happen to the family but it's not it's the uncertainty of it it's harder today than when it first happened. You all may be wondering about Marlena's father. It was suspected at first that he was the one who abducted Marlena, but there's no evidence to back that up really at all. Him and Pam broke up not long after Marlena was born. He was never really in the picture, and there's been no sightings of Marlena with him throughout the years, so I don't really know how he was as a person, but it doesn't look like he was really involved. After the Unsolved Mysteries episode aired, hundreds upon hundreds of calls rolled in with new leads, but none of them really went anywhere, and most people were just trying to get their hands on the $30,000 reward. At the time of her disappearance, Marlena Childress was four years old, four feet tall, 38 pounds, she had light brown hair, hazel eyes, her ears were pierced, she had silver caps on many of her teeth. She was wearing a purple and white shirt with light purple pants and pink jelly style shoes at the time of her disappearance. If she were alive today, this is possibly what she would look like. If you have any information at all regarding the disappearance of Marlena Childress, you are urged to call either the Obion County Crime Stoppers at 731-885-TIPS or the Union City Police Department in Tennessee at the Missing Persons Unit at 1-731-885-1515. I do have to say that as you're researching into cases, you're gonna come across a lot of forums and a lot of articles where people who knew the victim directly comment and have an input and may have a little bit of information of their own. I found this comment on an article from 2012. The comment is from 2017 and this person, Jennifer Lane Clark says, I wish they would do something. I was babysitting across the street that day. It still saddens me. She was never outside playing as Pam claimed, which is a weird thing to say, but possibly Marlena was never outside playing. Pam changed her story a lot, so maybe there's more to it. And I have to be careful with what I say in these videos, but I personally believe that Pam knows something more than she's led on all these years. Or maybe one of her confessions was true and then she took it back. I really don't know. I don't know what to make of this case. There's so many twists and turns and just things that don't make any sense. I researched this case for probably like two months now before doing this video and I still don't know what to think. But with all the supposed sightings of her, I think she may possibly still be out there, or if she's not out there today, that she wasn't initially murdered. I mean, maybe she was just harbored in different locations for a bit of time. She could have been sold. She could have been abducted. I mean, Pam could be telling the truth. Maybe she's just not mentally okay, and she just kept making up different things because she didn't know how to handle with the disappearance of her daughter. I really don't know. Let me know what you think down below in the comments, as always, and of course, leave any other recommendations for videos that you want me to do, any cases, any just subjects in general. I love reading through the comments, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Also, a huge thank you to my patrons, as always. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for all the support.